Yesterday I was talking, I, I told you yesterday, I told you, I said, I should have sattu ka paratha. I just wish I should have. And morning in breakfast we had sattu ka paratha. And I think one one is left, that's dal pita is left, so I'm telling you. Okay, so that one goal, so goal setting is there in my mind. Okay. So, um, first a caveat because my presentation is, uh, has broken all the rules of presentation. So I have some 82 slides, which probably I will not be able to speak. And then the font size is not 26, it is 18 or maybe 20 sometimes. <laughs> because what I have done is, uh, basically I have tried to prepare my slide as a notes to me. Kind of a study notes. Have you ever heard of something called a Zettelkasten? Anybody? Zettelkasten? So Zettelkasten is basically an idea to prepare flashcards. So before exams you can just revise everything. So you can revise everything. So I have prepared them like an index card of Zettelkasten. So that's why I have written study notes, not as a presentation. And not meant diagrams. Another rule which I have broken that uh, lot of text, almost none visual pictures or anything. Okay? So, we are with that. Alright. So, so the neurogenic bubble, can you hear me if I speak here? Yes. Okay. So, uh, neurogenic bubble, it dysfunctions from trauma or disease within the spinal cord. And it mainly, so I'm going to talk about, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about neurogenic bowel and if we have time, we'll talk a bit about bladder because everybody talks about bladder. Nobody talks about bowel. And even in exams also, there are only two answers. One is fiber supplement and another is anema. There are so many things beyond that, so we never talk about it. So that's why I thought I'll cover the neurogenic bowel and if we have time, because you have slides, you can go through the slides and then uh, I've left my slides here, so you can free to access. Okay. Uh, so dysfunction for trauma and disease within the spinal cord can result in neurogenic ball. It mainly affects the colorectum and the anal canal. Unlike the renal tree where everything gets affected. Uh, peristalsis and secretions are mainly controlled by the enteric nervous system, so it's different. The antric system is a bit different because the nerves that control this are within the intestine. Like in some mucosal we have Missner's plexus and in gut muscles we have Orbach's plexus. And the vagus innervates below the splenic flexure of colon. And that is why it mainly affects colorectum and the anal canal. And uh, the parasympathetic and sympathetic they affect but they do not directly supply the organ. So the distal colon parasympathetic from S2 to S4 and sympathetic to colon and rectum from T9 to T12 and the parasympathetic enhance secretion, peristalsis and relax the instructor. Whereas sympathetics, they are sympathetic towards you. That's how I used to remember. They are sympathetic towards you, so they reduce secretion and peristalsis whereas contract your instructor. So they store things. Now, anal canal is surrounded by both striated external and smooth internal sphincters. The upper part is surrounded by puborectalis muscle. I wanted to put the diagram but couldn't. But if you can really imagine in your diagram and you can see, and you can imagine that from the colon that rectum is coming and then it is going into the anus and then there is a sling that makes an anorectal angle. So the puborectalis is like this. So it makes an acute angle and stops the fecal material from getting down. So that is one of the very important organ. Okay. So and the internal sphincter is under reflex control of enteric as well as second nerves, and the external sphincter and the voluntary control of the pedungal. And the puborectalis creates an anorectal angle, and the angle is very important for defecation, and which prohibits the content in the anal canal. Now the defecation is preceded by mass movement of stools, the rectal wall stretches and the defecation reflex is initiated and it stimulates the contraction of rectal wall through sacral reflex arc and then what we have is a recto-anal inhibitory reflex. 
which causes relaxation of the internal sphincter and then stool passes down which is all of this is mediated by the parasympathetics and then the voluntary contraction of external sphincter stops it and also inhibits the whole thing now when we talk of continence the continence depends on voluntary contraction of the external sphincter the consistency of the stools the colorectal transit time rectal tone the anorectal sensibility and the tone of the puborectal sphincter so all of this will decide about your continence now we know that sympathetic and parasympathetic act through its stimulation and inhibition there is no direct uh, innervation and the parasympathetic innervate through the vagus and to small extent the proximal colon which is unaffected by the spinal cord injury there is nothing like in bladder um and bladder and lm and bladder there is nothing like that in when we talk of colon so basically when we are talking of colon we are talking of s2 above s2 s2 below s2 so lesion above s2 have increased tone and contractility of rectum which causes uh, reflex defecation whereas lesions as s2 have reduced tone and contractility and they cause impaction and incontinence so in acute phase the cut is hypotonic and unresponsive to stimulus and there is a severely prolonged colonic transit time during the first week of the surgery and this pattern of prolonged transit varies from individual to individual the reflex nbt is neurogenic bowel disorder so if i say nbt so that's the acronym and the reflex nbt has a prolonged transit time in colon but not in rectum so the transit time is okay the long transit time is there in descending colon and the rectosynoid in areflexic when so when i say areflexic that means there is a lesion at s2 or below okay and the emptying of the rectosynoid part is significantly delayed in both now there are various disorders that we see in this defecation one is impaired rectal empty it can be because the poor rectal muscle propulsion or it can be increased resistance to evacuation or it can be an obstructed defecation it can be high anal resting pressure or it can be incomplete relaxation or it can be because of dyssynergia there can be dyssynergia between the pelvic floor and the rectal propulsion or it can be external sphincter and pelvic floor and the rectal propulsion or it can be because of the decreased or absent anal sensations and voluntary contraction so if we divide it so reflexic we have increased tone a reflexic we can have poor emptying of rectum hypotonic rectum poor sphincter function incontinence impaction and the common related problems are the constipation fecal incontinence need for digital evacuation abdominal discomfort and hemorrhoids now the first we have to if you want to solve the problem then we have to understand the problem and we have to define the problem before we solve it so we have to assess so we have that standard uh, asia proforma so we use that to decide what is the level the only thing that lacks in that is the sacral reflexes and pelvic floor tone which is not given in that chart so we have to do it separately then bristol stool scale how many people uh, use anybody uses bristol in and of okay very few people so until as you know how he is passing how you are going to treat it so you have to know what kind of stool he is passing is it hard it is rocky sard or it is small pellets what kind of stool he is passing so until as you know the current consistency how you can change the consistency you have to know what is the consistency at this point of time then there is a bowel management sub scale of quality of life and uh, it is free but it's a copyright material so i have given you an email you can actually mail them and get it okay and then we have a international sci bowel function basic data set this is by the asia group so i'll just show you what it is it is available there and then we need a detailed gi history and uh, dr using sir has already covered it so i'll just touch some of the points so this is the form everybody fills it every day then this is the bristol school it is also available freely pdf internet so we have different kinds of stool so you have separate hard lumps and then sausage and sausage but cracks and like a sausage or snake then soft blobs fluffy pieces and watery so we really have to 
because if say if there is a type two, then we need to have softer stools. Okay, then we need to have some kind of supplement or change the diet. Whereas if you have a type seven, then we need to have a harder stool, more lumpy stools. Okay, so then you have to change diets accordingly. Then this is the international span called bowel function basic data. So that is also again it's available. You can use it if you want it. I'm I'm always mad with different kinds of scale because I'm impressed with Lord Kelvin because he used to say if you can't measure it you can't improve it. So you have to measure to improve. That's why marks are necessary. Is it? Until as everybody gets A and A plus, then it's difficult. It's either five or six or eight or nine or six or whatever. So GI history, uh, occurrence of incontinence, associated symptoms, frequency of defecation, consistency, volume of the stool per evacuation, presence of urge, urgency, ability to control if any accident has happened when, why, because somebody is working, going to office, and then he says, sir, every time there is an accident at around 12 or whatever. And stress incontinence, very common. People who are working, uh, who have air reflexic uh, NBD, very common. So, what what can be our standard care? Use of oral or rectal medicines if required. Facilitative techniques. When I say facilitative techniques, it can be position, it can be rectal stimulation, any help that you do externally. And schedule when you take that is also very important. Schedule of medication and methods. Duration of bowel. How much time it takes? You cannot have three hours to uh, have the bowel evacuated. So, it is very important issue. And even like uh, if you if you go through. There are various uh, studies whether what is the top priority of a paraplegic or a or a, or a, or a tetraplegic. They always say, I'll, "I'll tell you in Hindi because I see all the Hindi patients." So, the sab tatti pishab apne aap kar le sa. That's what they say. They say that the person should be able to somehow manage his bowel and bladder. Rest of the things the family will take care of. So that's how important it is. Locomotor. Is second. First is bowel and bladder. So, what is the functional level? The need of assistance. What was the pre-morbid condition? A person who has been a constipated the whole his life, he is not going to change. So that will always be there. Type and amount of fiber which is consumed. Amount of fluid that he takes, and what are the activities that he is doing involved in. So, how many of you get an X-ray done if there is a problem with continence? A really easy scale. We always get it done. It's a simple abdominal X-ray, and it's a starved score. So I've deliberately written it uh, so that you can do. It's a very easy thing. It quantifies the amount of feces you have. Okay, because then you have to decide what you want to give. You want to give a fiber. You want to give a pag leg. You want to give a laxative, or you want a bowel wash. What do you want to do? And then you can you can have a spurious diarrhea. How you will know is having a spurious diarrhea only when you have a High score on a abdominal X-ray, and you have a diarrhea. Then you say there is a spurious diarrhea. So you have to have an X-ray. So ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, rectus sigmoid. So all these uh, four areas, you score them as no feces, small amount, moderate, and severe. And that the total score is maximum 16. So based on that, the, the worse the score, more constipated the person. Is. Okay, then uh, CT abdomen. Sometimes you need to have a CT abdomen. See, if you have a patient who has not passed the bowel from last couple of days, and the bowel sounds are not really good, maybe the abdominal girth is a little bit high. Don't stop, because the next thing you are going to have is a subacute intestinal obstruction, or maybe perforation. Get a CT done. Get a CT done. Okay. But, but as uh, Dr. Sanjay was telling, these are the undesirable complications that will happen. But complications will only happen when you will work, na? If you don't work, there is no complication. If you want no complication, don't it. Okay, that's the simple way to do it. So uh, then we can have a when we have complicated cases. When we have complicated cases, we need to have a knowledge about the evaluation because your gastro friends are too busy. They are too busy in all kinds of endoscopies and all those things. They are not interested in all these things. So sometimes you just have to talk to them that this is what I need. Can you do it? Because radio opaque markers, you have to do it. So you basically ingest radio opaque markers, and then you take serial X-rays. Okay, and that will give you the 
the transit time. So if you want the whole uh, the whole gut transit time, you do multiple X-rays right from starting for three days. You do it every day, every six hours, and then you find it. Or you can do a only for right transverse retrosigmoid three X-rays starting from uh, twelve hours. Or you can have a scintigraphy every thirty minutes for two hours if you want to know gastric emptying. Or 24, 48, 72 if you want to check the colonic transit time. Then we have smart capsule by Medtronics. This is this is old. This is not new. This capsule came, I think, some 20 years back. So you basically ingest the capsule. It will tell you pH, the gastric emptying, colonic, whole gut transit time, and it will also take photographs. So that is there. So you can do that also if you want. So you can also do ano rectal manometry uh, to know about the, like we do urodynamics. So you can have ano rectal manometry. So this will tell you about the pelvic floor dyssynergia or obstructive defecation or if there is a deficient propulsive force with increased resistance because sometimes what happens you just go and you try to put lot of pressure so if you put lot of pressure your excelsior actually closes down your pelvic load don't increase it and you are not able to pass even if you are doing all kinds of maneuvers well salva and what not what is the pressure which is happening at the puborectalis that you can find out in inner manometry is it rest, squeeze and cough so you do three maneuvers like you do in uh, urodynamics rectal sensation and compliance, then the presence of rare, the pelvic electromyography can also be done while you are doing this, and pubertal nerve latency, and uh, as I already told you, rectal tone is usually higher in supraconal lesions than in conal and cordiaconal lesions. Pudental uh, neuropathy can happen, uh, it's, a, it's a trauma, impaired rare is common. So what is the basic management that you talk about? The basic is life modification, adequate fluid, fiber intake, physical exercise, individual bowel care. Now daily it can be minimum three times per week, it's acceptable, uh, alternate day. Lifestyle and medication regime to achieve a crystal score of three to four. Rectal stimulates can be used, digital rectal stimulation and then we have a lot of uh, medi uh, medican, medication options. So we'll talk about it. Then we have common complication. We have constipation, incontinence, abdominal pain, anorectal pain. The two of the common things that over a period you will learn is subacute intestinal obstruction and ischemic colitis. Even though ischemic colitis has now reduced because people used to have, we used to put everybody on that reduction pillow many, many years back. So now we don't do because of the mesenteric uh, artery compromise. And then we can have autonomic dyslexia somebody will be teaching so I will not go into that. The important point what I want to tell you is use lidocaine gel instead of any other um, moisturizing or, or lubricating agent because the lidocaine actually helps you to numb everything and reduces or uh, it uh, stops the trigger for uh, autonomic dysfunction. Okay, so manual maneuvers, abdominal massage, really don't help. So they usually do it lower right abdomen with the heel of the hand in clockwise manner. Doesn't work. <coughs> you can have well salva. As I told you, excessive force can actually lead to contraction of pelvic floor. So it doesn't work most of the times. We can have adaptive equipment. Very, very, very important. It is so hard to get. So that's why I put some pictures pinched on the internet so that you actually know. Isn't it? Because I see what mind knows. Isn't it? So until as you see them, you can actually get somebody to devise them. Okay, so the top one, this is the, oh sorry, I have stopped everything. Okay. So this is, the, this is a stimulator and this is a suppository inserter. So it has a universal cuff kind of a thing. So if somebody is tetraplegic with good uh, elbow, he can actually use it. Alright? How many times a person will use? We have to be practical about it. So we can have a high. Oh, what is this? Okay, sorry. So this is like a high-end uh, adaptive seat, and uh, or we can have yes, this, where you can just use a walker, remove the lower bar, reverse it, and just slide it on the commode. But I don't know. Um, in my patient group, the problem is they don't have a toilet. So these formulas actually don't work. Uh, so we have to have a kind of a very 
simple masonry job. You have to explain them. Even if you go to the guidelines, there are actually guidelines, okay? For Accessible India guidelines are there about the toilet uh, modifications. Have you ever seen that from Government of India? You have not seen that. You must go through that. Because, but again, all those modifications actually cannot be done by 80% of my patients. Because it requires money, masonry work, however simple it might be. So we have to have some uh, innovative ideas. So I leave those ideas to you. All right, this is very important. Okay, so when you say, "Are fiber cow, fiber cow," there are so many kinds of fiber. And what kind of fiber you want to eat? How much fiber you want to eat? Okay, so I won't go into all all the points, but. It's 38 grams for a man below 50, 30 grams for a man above 50, and 21 for women. So this is the amount of fiber that we should have. Okay. The other thing is, what kind of fiber? Soluble or insoluble fibers? Okay. So if you have coarse and insoluble fibers like wheat bran, do you know what wheat bran is? Ghar pe mummy banati, chapati banati. Uh, but most of you will have wives also now, you have residents. So, uh, the thing is, this is this is a patriarchal society, don't take it otherwise, okay? So, please spare me, okay? <laughs> because my daughter will kill me the moment I see that it's her job, so she will kill me. So, I am taking that words back. It's a, so, whoever cooks, <laughs> that's what I am saying. Okay, so whoever cooks. So, so you, 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 you always, Use a sieve, isn't it? Before before making chapatis, use a sieve to clean the bra. Okay. So if you want to have insoluble fiber, don't do that. That's the simplest thing. Insoluble fiber, wheat barn fiber. They irritate the large bowel mucosa, stimulate water and mucosa secretions, and lead to soft school stools. But if they are too coarse, they will make you constipated. Okay, so this is we have to understand because how many of them will buy your uh, psyllium husk? Because that cut clear or soft bag, whatever you want them to buy, that also costs 100, 120 rupees, 15 grams twice a day. So that 300 gram dabba will finish in 10 days. So he needs 300, 500 rupees every day just for that cut clear and adding to 25 rupees each for baclofen. Remember, 25 rupees. So coarser particle can produce constipation. Psyllium is a gel forming soluble fiber, high water holding capacity, this is the reaction. So I will note down, whenever it is. The other thing, oh, so the, the soluble fibers, they are from oat bran, barley, nuts, seed, beans, lentils, dal, all kinds of dal, soya bean and whatnot, legumes, all of them have soluble fibers. And the insoluble fibers of wheat and whole, whole grain products. Okay? So this we have to understand what kind of fiber you want to get. So if you have a person who is having type 2, type 3 bristol, so I would like to give him insoluble fibers to have more water retention and suck more water, have more secretions. Okay? So these are all small things, but they are remember. Remember, as Hippocrates said. Have your food like medicines or you'll have to eat medicines like food. Okay? So, so you you treat them not with nutrition. Why you want to prescribe a new medicine? Isn't it? Why you want to prescribe? You just tell him to change the food habits and it will work for you. Okay? Then this is FODMAP. How many of you know about FODMAPs? FODMAPs? FODMAP very important even for us. There are so many patients, na? they come and they say, some besan khate hi mera this is what is happening. Fermentable oligosaccharide, disaccharide, monosaccharides, and polyols, which are called as FODMAPs. So sometimes what actually happens is the FODMAPs go to your gut, gets fermented, makes a lot of gas, and have abdominal dysfunction, discomfort, and a lot of gas. So you should know which are the foods in our high FODMAPs. Okay? So these are high FODMAPs and this is low FODMAPs. So people from Kerala usually have the best diet because they always have matta rice. Okay? You understand what is matta? It's an unprocessed diet. Okay? With, with actually covers. 
can write CT. Okay. So, so low format because the brown brown rice is low format. Okay. So you can change your diet accordingly, isn't it? That's wonderful. And you have to maintain hydration again. A lot of uh, guidelines are there. Just go through that because my time is finishing. I will stop when my time stops. And that's the things you have to read from my slides. Okay. And then oral medication. So many. I have deliberately given some uh, market name because when I was young, I used to go to different and they will tell this particular drug will work. And then how to prescribe it? Because you don't know the trade name, so I have no affiliation to Megalex. I've just put it there so that you know what to prescribe when you want milk or magnesia with uh, liquid paraffin. Okay, so I put some names so that when you want to prescribe, you can you can know the market name. So polyethyl glycol pack is pack move. So basically, when you have a normal or slow transit constipation, minimize constipating drugs because we always write all carbapin and carbapin and all this NT will cause constipation. Okay, then we can have osmotic agents, or simplest and the cheapest of everything is milk of magnesium. Milk of any dispensing pharmacist will make it. Milk of magnesium, wonderful product. Supplement with osmotic agent like Sena, Bisacodil, which is Dermaphil uh, Fresh Tag. Then Lubiprostone. If nothing works, this is like incremental. Okay, so it doesn't work. Lubiprostone, which comes by the name of Lubivel. And dinacrotide is not available here, or we can have Prucarobrite, which comes, there's only one company that is Pruvel. This is the final word for constipation. Okay, so if you Pruvel, everything kills. If Pruvel doesn't work, this is dangerous. You don't do it until and unless you are in hospital. Okay, you put a neostigmine patch and give glycopyrrolid tablet, and he will pass. Okay, because of uh, the secretory effect. The problem is you have to really monitor because then all, if you get a diarrhea and bad uh, electrolyte imbalance. Okay, this all you can read in the slides. And we have rectal agents like Alcolex. You don't get look uh, least in suppository uh, until you have a pharmacist making for you. But you can have something called as neotomic enema. That's a glycine enema, small amount. Okay, which lubricates and stimulates. Or we can have pack base. It is not available here with us. We do not have docusid, we need soap set, we never use. We can have uh, irrigation, which will come to later. And this is Peristeel Plus, uh, which is available in market. So, transcellular irrigation, uh, 20 to 30 minutes after meals, clean water, pumped at 200 to 300 ml per minute, 500 ml to start, doesn't work, stop for 15 minutes, then you can again do. But we do not have this. I think there was this company, Colostum or something like that, which came to India for a few years. They had this uh, anal plugs and all these things, but they were so costly. I think nobody bought it, and they and they went back. Okay, so I'll stop here, and you can go through the uh, the slides which are available to you. Thank you. Hundred times. The carb chesta means that you have should have curiosity like a crow. Bako dhyanam. So when you are studying, you should be like a swan, uh, like a crane. Totally focused, trying to catch the fish. See, the moment you say, yeah, that's like one bar, you go to Imphal, and why don't you have some experience with joy? Jaipur se baar nijau. But in Jaipur, there is a lot of fish. And, go to leave your home, go outside to learn. Vidyarthi naam Pancha Lakshma.